he was Roberta all along. This is spoilers. Hey everybody. Uh we're Hello. here. Hey. Hello. We're here this week to spoil the 1960 epic Swiss <sighs> Family Robinson, aka Swiss Family Robertson, aka Swiss Family Robertson, aka <laughs> Swifty Fam Long. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I hit all of them. Um getting swifty. <laughs> getting swifty on this pod i think how we're gonna do this is to kind of break this up in three acts but before we go to that i'm gonna throw it to each of our uh our lovely visitors tonight uh i'm jordan recording from north carolina and i'm gonna throw it from east to west i don't know who's further east from you guys but uh, let's go round the pod this is stevie recording from elkhart indiana josh where are you recording from I'm recording from Goshen. You're in Elkhart tonight, so maybe you are more east than me. Makes sense. High possibility. Is this because of the compass thing in Swiss Family Robinson that like we're really going over directional things here? Is that why? I need I need my protractor, right? Okay. I could have used a compass on those introductions, but this is Pappy recording <laughs> from Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Yikes. All right. We got through it. Got through the intros. <laughs> Barely. So, <laughs> so I think I want to uh, kind of divide this movie into three acts. And the first act is from the epic crash of the Swiss family Robinson ship up until they find he, which is actually Roberta. It's yeah. Robert. <laughs> you act like that was some like huge spoiler that lasted all movie. I mean, he was only a sheet. Uh, she was only a Easy. for what? Like 10 minutes, five minutes. It was a solid 30. Hmm. <laughs> It should have been a solid 10 seconds for anyone with a pair of eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It's my fault the gun went off. She didn't mean to fire. I don't care. I could have been... What did you say? She didn't... It's a girl. There's not many other spoilers to reveal here besides, like, the pirates lose. <laughs> 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 yeah. <You> guys, <laughs> man, this is spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways... We have the big epic crash. Uh, they make their way ashore. Where, do you, where, do, where are you guys at on this movie? Um, I'm assuming most of you haven't seen it at this point. I know Josh has because he's my big brother and he has seen it. But Stevie Pappy, where are you guys at at this point? Uh, I didn't think that I had seen this movie before <laughs> until I started watching it. And I remembered every single scene. Time almost- bandits all over. <laughs> Yeah, most of the lines. Uh, I actually, so I guess to talk through this first act, if there was a, it's probably my favorite part because I feel like the action is very like sort of cause and effect. Like we start with the boat crashing. Excuse me. So they got to find a way to get to shore. Then they got to solve the problem of, okay, where are we going to live? Like, what are we going to eat? Now there's pirates in the mix. And so everything's sort of like set up pretty well so if there was if there was a favorite part that i had it'd be this first part <laughs> stevie what do you think uh, well i have to give credit to the action in the beginning <laughs> i don't um i liked it where they were like below deck and there was water flying everywhere and just kind of i could probably would have made a pretty cool sound stage to see how they filmed it um then after that it was all downhill because <laughs> when they crashed Middle son Ernst, who no one likes, is just saying the dumbest things humanly possible just to fill the time. The ship is ours by maritime law. <laughs> oh look, pa, an old organ. Oh look, pa, when I learn how to, I can learn how to use this. Oh look, pa, and eventually the dad just goes, looks at, give, gives him a look like, shut the hell up. <laughs> And he's holding a ton of guns while he does this. So I'm waiting for Dad to shoot Ernst on the spot. And that never Was came there to any explanation why they were like locked in like the cargo hold. No. Yeah. <laughs> the beginning is a little blurry. I, I took it as they were in their uh, family quarters and the ship started getting tossed and instead of like alerting them and helping them escape, the whole crew just kind of one by one slipped off on their own. And they were kind of trapped in there because just how much the 
ship was tossed around? Is that... It seems, seems kind of like weird huge, they wouldn't be like, able to feel that on a boat. It just feels like a huge break in protocol, too, for like a captain to just leave civilian passengers sleeping on the boat while it's sinking. That's why they get the oh. ship. Maritime law. <laughs> Maritime law? Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't say this is a classic for me, though. I just sort of grew up there a few times. <laughs> so maybe that will affect my cynicism as we move forward. <laughs> Fair enough. As we move forward. <laughs> as we move forward, indeed. Uh, so they make their way ashore, and they manage to take several animals with them. <laughs> <laughs> some dogs, some ducks, and geese, I think, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, a pig, a cow. Eventually a pig, a cow, a goat. Horses, donkeys. Two dogs. The dogs were already there. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> and I didn't know this. Pigs don't float. You need to strap barrels to them to get them to get across water. <laughs> this was educational. <laughs> I was thinking about making this a game. Like, does a goat know how to swim? Does a pig know how to swim? Does a goat float? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a Dr. Seuss book. But early in this period, I think we can all agree that the little kid is annoying as fuck. More than Ernst? What? Dude, the little kid, Francis, I think is his name. He did want Francis, to save yeah. Scooby-Doo and his brother pretty badly, and it was pretty unnecessary. Just always, like, my dogs! My dogs! <laughs> He's always screaming. What's his deal? <laughs> Stevie, you love him. Fra- brother Francis was not the strongest part of this movie. And you're right, he <laughs> <Not> did... <laughs> he did scream the whole time. And wander off doing the dumbest things. But I still gotta say, say, Ernst is still number one in annoying characters category. I'll say this though, Francis is annoying, but they needed something for his character to be doing in the second and third act while two of the three boys are trying to get laid. So they established that he loves animals. That's pretty much his whole shtick. So, I mean, they do a good job from the beginning saying he's a, he's a critter lover. Yeah, and we're... We're just talking about like the scene with all the animals floating over. And I think <laughs> from right at the beginning, animals are like a big deal in this film. It's like a zoo film. Like <laughs> they have every animal a zoo would have. It's like they brought a zoo to We t- bought a zoo. Yeah, they brought a zoo and they took it to Trinidad and Tobago and let it loose. Filmed it. I, I think in this first act when we're first going on the beach too, and those animals are just running around, like it's pretty Pretty technically impressive, right? And they always say, you know, don't make a movie with kids or animals. So this must have just been like hell, such a headache to make. Yeah, it's <laughs> impressive from that perspective. <laughs> so they make their way ashore. Uh, they try to make a signal at first, and they attract some unwanted pirates uh, and quickly extinguish whatever signal they made. Um, and it kind of introduces the next step of the story, I guess, as to where... The two brothers go on go off on a trek, and they end up finding he, which ends up being Roberta, being held by the the pirates on one end of the island. Which leaves me wondering, kind of how how big is this island? And as a follow up, is it the same island as Lost? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think Very the size cool. of the island doesn't matter. Uh, I think it doesn't matter. I think that they (laughs) size definitely does not matter. And they, they, yeah, they (laughs) they laid the foundations for lost, but this isn't the actual lost Island. I think, Uh. I think actually the important thing here and maybe kind of the one interesting thing as an adult watching this movie is like a wholesome family movie (laughs) from the sixties, trying to tell the story of two brothers fighting over a fertile lady on a desert island. Hmm. And I thought that actually, if there's anything to pull um, as far as, you know, thematically interesting, I think that it came from that storyline. I could not disagree more. <laughs> for, me, for me, the introduction of... For uh, me. <laughs> for me. <laughs> not the really introduction good. Their introduction of Birdie, a.k.a. Roberta, just throws a wrench in what was a movie that was had pretty decent pacing. 
like I mentioned earlier, they're, they're sort of solving the problems. Every problem they solve brings up another problem. And so the, the plot is just sort of advancing with them trying to survive. And even though I'm an adult and I know they're going to make it, at least that was interesting. Once we have the introduction of this character, though, any of the survival elements of this movie cease to exist and it becomes a more of a high school drama almost, which I hated. Well, I feel like they laid the the groundwork for it before she was found. They they had several conversations the parents did about how, you know, this is paradise, except like where's the future for our kids and like where are the women for them to marry? So I really I really do think there's a little bit of a deeper level here of, you know, like what is paradise and like if there's an inequality between men and women, like how does it societally break down? Do you think when we get to New Guinea, if we ever do, there'll be any girls our age? By the time we get to New Guinea, we won't care what age they are. <laughs> How can we be more swift? <laughs> Stevie, Jesus. what do you think about the love triangle? Thank the you. introduction of Fast Roberta. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Didn't love it. It just also made Ernst even more annoying, which he deserved to get friend zoned. Dude, what's um, up with your hate for him? I, I'm not really understanding that. He's the worst. That's not a valid explanation. Like, he's the worst. What? What's bad? You just say the most annoying things. And it was pretty obvious from the get-go Roberta was not into him. He's out making straw hats instead of trying to survive. Just doing Ernst things. But, um, yeah, I did not love the love triangle part of it. I felt like it was kind of shoehorned in there to get a to get another female actress in there. And, uh, yeah, didn't did not love that part. Well, I think that Ernst was like, supposed to be the brains while Fritz was the bronze. And so, yeah. Ernst kinda... wanted to take an organ onto the beach. And they did take that organ. <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> Successfully, yeah. Well, one key was messed up. Spoiler. Yeah. Speaking of the organ, though, that the whole love triangle thing is sort of encapsulated in that dance scene. That is <laughs> so cringy to me. And like, Their dad can cut like a rug. It. Dad can dance. Dad can well, dance. But, well, that's just because you don't whole... understand swift dancing. Swift. <laughs> swift, yeah. <laughs> True story. I Googled, where is this family supposed to be from? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> they all have different accents. <laughs> it's Switzerland. But uh, just to go back to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that dance. That <laughs> that dancing is just so cringeworthy to me because it's it's so obvious what's going on but it also felt really simplistic in the way the characters were expressing themselves like i don't know josh you said as like from a family perspective it was interesting for you to see but like i just feel like the parents would instantly realize this probably isn't good to have like this overt i don't know sexual love triangle going on between three of the five people who are living on this island are you saying dogs aren't people yeah. Well, I don't know. You, I guess, can you make love to dogs? I wouldn't know. Probably in like what? Kentucky or Alabama. <laughs> well, I think Jordan was in act one. Or what act are we supposed to be in right now? I don't know. I We're kind no of all idea. over the place. We're in the fast uh, Roberta phase. Dude, that, that scene was weird. But I think maybe it's, it was only, instead of having a montage, they showed like a scene of their family in a holiday. And honestly, back in the day, like this takes the movie takes place in the 1700s or something. I think like Napoleon. They mentioned Napoleon in the first act, and I would assume that their entertainment back then would have seriously been like lay mass organs and dancing like that. That's like the best they got. True, going to church. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean. It's interesting. It is like a character piece, but like... Uh, like a period piece? A period piece, yeah. A character study of people from that time trapped on an island. But, uh, I don't know I don't know how realistic it is. I'm sure it's like super whitewashed, as we'll get to as we talk more about the pirates, maybe. <laughs> Jordan? Yo-ho! <laughs> <laughs> pirates got Jordan. <laughs> Sorry, we will talk about the pirates. They'll be there. 
<laughs> so as we move on to, I think, Act 3. Sorry, my mic was turned off for a second there. Uh, <laughs> really engaged. No, 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 no. I was making other noises outside. I kept saying, they're just two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as we kind of move back towards the family camp here, the, the two brothers, they're just two brothers, uh, they move Roberta back <laughs> towards... There's three brothers. They clearly have a strong bond. (laughs) (laughs) It's just two brothers. They uh, move back towards (laughs) the family camp, and they finally introduce Roberta to mother and father, which is their dad's and mom's names. Even on IMDb, that is their character name. (laughs) That drove me fucking insane, too. Like, when they're sharing intimate (laughs) moments, and they call each other father and mother, it's like, oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so they kind of uh, they have a little holiday dance it's Christmas apparently the mom sort of adopts Roberta as a daughter I suppose and then they start preparing for the pirates to come back and so they start kind of preparing traps uh, where do you guys find yourself at at this point Stevie How, what did you feel about the uh, the tiger pit <laughs> dude I'm pretty checked out at this point honestly <laughs> 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 I did not like the cut of this movie's jib. Um, <laughs> yeah, when they cut, yeah. As I said, checked out. I'll say okay. I'll say this: that in order to enjoy this movie, you have to accept the fact that it's an escapist boyhood fantasy, and check any like rational analysis of of what they're doing out the door at some point, like. Even to the point where the mom and dad are calling each other mom and dad. It's like what a little kid would imagine. With the tiger thing, I think they did a good job of setting it up because you get the tiger once early on in the camp. And then one of the most shocking scenes for me was when the dogs fight the tiger. Do you guys remember that? That was great. Yeah, that was some good effects. Like, I I don't know how they did that. Yeah, they fucking had animals fight. (laughs) 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 Animal lives were lost, Josh. There was that no was special effects. That there was, was no special fear. effects. They had seven Scooby Doo's on set for that scene. I were th- any animals harmed in the making of this? For real? Yeah, Easily. I, re- I yeah. read that this would not be up to par now, but then it was cool. <laughs> According to IMDb, many of the animal scenes would not be allowed in film. Today. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. But this is no a dog's purpose, so we can continue. It was worse. <laughs> Rock dog. But yeah. I guess the whole the whole tiger thing is so ridiculous. It only makes sense if you're going to suspend disbelief and it's like, hey, everyone in the family is pulling their weight and we're getting through it. Kind of like that sentiment. Yeah. And like I said earlier, the, the island is a virtual zoo. So they bring the petting zoo and then... Because they talk about this land bridge early on, they have an excuse to bring literally any animal from any continent into this small island off the coast of Australia. I think, yeah, there's a lot of suspending your disbelief necessary. And yeah, I think that, you know, it's a Disney film. It's a family film. Jordan called it an epic earlier. (laughs) And I'll just leave it at that. Sweeping epic. I mean, what, what... uh, animals were out of place. I mean, we have tigers and zebras. There's no zebras. And <laughs> elephants and monkeys. Hyenas. And hyenas. Fat fucking hyenas, by the way. Dude, that scene, <laughs> that scene where they show the zebra that's caught in like the quicksand. And, <laughs> and they do like a quick pan, like quick shots of like seven different predators that are like around it ready to pounce. There's like <laughs> vultures, a leopard, like nine hyenas. The hyenas <laughs> Fattest I was cracking up. Ever seen? <laughs> I was Hyenas laughing. That bad. To the point of the whole land bridge thing, though, that's why Ernst drives me crazy too, Stevie. He's like, I theorize there must have been a land bridge at some no! point. Like, Dude, did you so just like, like, did you just like invent Darwinism like off the top of your fucking head just now? Gosh, <laughs> serving a few species. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Classic Ernst. <laughs> he knew about Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. Could two big dogs take on a tiger, though? Like, would they scare off a tiger? Dude, a tiger, like, would have, like, broke them with one swat. Like, no, they did it in real life. I saw two dogs kill a tiger in this movie for real. (laughs) (laughs) No, a tiger would have killed them with one swat and slammed both of them. 
I I also just I, just to correct something. I said Pan, Pantera a second ago. I meant Pangea. <laughs> you didn't mean like Pantera, the rock band from the 80s? Yeah, that's what it came across as. Thanks for laughing, <laughs> though, when I said it. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, okay, so yeah, the, their interactions with animals. Like, there's a lot of throwing rocks at animals. There's a part where they're, like, wrestling a huge boa constrictor in a in a river. That goes on 20 seconds too long. <laughs> <laughs> but I, would you say that maybe the performance from those two the two lead male actors, Ernst and Fritz is maybe kind of impressive as far as they're riding a bunch of these animals there. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it looks physically taxing to say the least. I said, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're actually both decent actors. The character of Ernst annoys me, but I think they're both convincing in what they're being asked to do when they make this. But not just that, like Ernst is literally riding an ostrich. It, have you seen any actors that you know riding an ostrich or doing something like that? I mean, not since it became illegal 50 fucking years ago. <laughs> <laughs> to go off of that. You guys aren't, wait, no, you guys, come on, give them some credit. They're like on donkeys flying off. They're doing all these stunts. They're climbing around. Their shirts are off. They're looking <laughs> real <laughs> There off. it is. They're oiled down. <laughs> these are some fine young men. I would agree that Fritz Fritz is a hunk, but Ernst is eh, me. Fritz went on to become Dano in Hawaii Five O, right? Like book him Dano. That's him. James MacArthur. I think so. That is him. Yep. Hawaii Five O. Yeah. So maybe some chops, but yeah, I guess from the part of them riding the animals to lassoing a sea turtle to, <laughs> to all their other <laughs> interactions, it's pretty impressive, but. Francis is riding a sea turtle five seconds of being in that island. That's definitely okay, illegal. Yeah. <laughs> From a physical perspective, their performance performances are impressive, but the dialogue is terrible, right, Josh? Like, the way the lines are delivered just feels so unreal. Yeah, and I would say that's, like, a sign of the times, mm. but that's hard to say when we watched 12 Angry Men, like, two weeks ago. Like, clearly there were some writers that had a... Yeah had a handle on like what people actually sound like. But I will say this to your point earlier, you said them calling each other mother and father sounds like uh, just a cliche that they're playing into. I would argue that you might be surprised and that's how old timey people spoke. I believe that my grandparents call each other something similar to that. In private though, Jordan, (sighs) maybe Jordan. I I just, Jordan's know. mic off. I and suppose what the fuck? they do. <laughs> what? <laughs> Indeed. So I I would say that your uh, old timey argument, Josh, it kind of brings us into the whole. Uh, this is a weird fucking to view from a current lens. A weird movie from Disney because they pretty much roast this girl that's dressed as a dude, and they call him a him her a sissy at some point Mm -hmm. and for whatever reason they can't recognize that it's an actual girl okay so yeah i wanted to mention something about that as soon as they realize it's a girl obviously they're playing into like oh let me help you take my hand take my hand that whole thing Mm -hmm. and like they want to make everything super easy for her and earlier in the movie like the way they treated the mom and like they built a house for the mom and stuff Compare that to like it's just two brothers. Com- compare that to <laughs> like now, like Moana or some of the new Disney movies that have come out. That's really an about face they've done. Maybe it took fifty-seven years, but it's a big difference, right? Well, I think yeah. even as, as early as like uh, Mulan, you started to see yeah. the female character taking control of her life, and really since then, the concept of the Disney princess is non-existent. There's no longer a guy coming to help her, it's almost always her finding inner empowerment. And so it really is different to look at it from that perspective. But I can forgive the film, even for being straight up homophobic and the fact that it's supposed to be 18th century. So like the the depiction of like the rights and the respect that women are afforded is probably accurate with yeah. the times. Yeah. Uh, so it makes sense from that perspective. 
I think so. But if you think about Moana, that's probably what day. It's a hell when, of is movie. That, when is that supposed to take place? Probably. That could easily be like in the between 1800s. the rocks. Uh, busy, busy schedule. That's <laughs> what it's supposed to. Be. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not trying to make this huge like Walt Disney comparison, but I, I did think it was interesting that I think that is one of the many reasons why this movie would not fly today, and that women are just basically these flowery helpless creatures and like it's a big deal at the end because the the mom like shoots one of the pirates when he gets close in and it's like oh look she can contribute too and well like, even oh. even in one scene the uh roberta ends up shooting like pinpointing a fucking shell in the ocean <laughs> just blasts it as well i like that scene because it reminded me of aliens because it was like when uh hicks teaches ripley how to shoot it was very yep. very yeah. sexual. identical <laughs> Yeah, aliens. 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 I Aliens. also drew some comparison to Captain Fantastic, as far as like it's a family living out in the woods and like training, and even down to like he gives the whole family wine at some point. And to Francis, he's like, "No, not too much, Francis. Not too much." <laughs> that was another thing I was going to bring up. Is like this is definitely a early, early like Disney thing is where he I, I don't know if he's pouring wine or rum or what it is I, I assumed it was rum because they had it on the ship rum. But it could be yeah yeah that's probably true but yeah he like lets the little baby kid the baby brother have a little sip he's like oh that's enough that's enough and that, <laughs> just enough. a thimble <laughs> <laughs> just a baby shot Josh I have a question for you yeah uh, to my favorite segment, Swiss, our Lord and Savior. Who was our Christ-like character in this movie? Oh, God. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. I don't... Man, I should have a better answer for this, but I'd have to say that... Wow. Maybe there is there is none. And no, Ernest. Think, Ernest. Oh. Ernst. Ernst. Ernst because he lets go of the woman in the end and realizes that he was he's in too, the friend zone all along. <laughs> he's too weak to compete, so he might as well move on. <laughs> I was really hoping him and Fritz were going to have like a battle to the death for Roberta. Damn, that really wasn't a Christ-like thing at all. I don't know. I, would say I don't the, think uh, that the father. What, no, what about the... I'd say the papa. What about Roberta's grandpa? He sacrifices himself when he writes a ransom note. For the no! <laughs> And then he does come back one day. Finally, he comes he back. He does come back. That's on the true. third okay. day, he comes back. That's the one. It's the <laughs> yeah, grandpa. Yeah, that's the one. Roberta's grandpapa. Yep. But for real, why does he say ransom note? <laughs> ransom. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> Dude, and then when he comes back with his boat, like, they just crush those pirates immediately. <laughs> what did you... Devastation. Yeah, let's not, let's not spoil that scene quite yet. <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to spoil it right now. All right, let's do it. As the Swift family Robersons <laughs> build, build up their defense. <laughs> God. <They build. laughs> Swiss family Morganson. It's, it's just the Swift family. Uh, they, they build up several defenses, which are pretty clever, but <laughs> they end up coming under attack by some, some pirates that they initially signaled. And they're after... Uh, Roberta, because they have her grandpa, I guess. Because and, pirates have nothing better to do than find some boy on an island. <laughs> and sail around the same island, exactly. <laughs> Never mind feeding that whole crew for weeks on end just to find a boy. Mutiny. So the pirates basically fall for all the swift family tricks. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> And so they're kept off the mountaintop. But I think it is worth visiting that all of the pirates, I think, are of some sort of, uh, I want to say... Indonesian. Indonesian, Asian descent. And I think that's another Mm -hmm. plot point where Disney has really let us down. Uh, Pappy, how do you feel about the portrayal of pirates pirates in in this movie? Well, it's not surprising. They didn't really bother me as much as the, the animals, animals, honestly. honestly. Like, like, really, I didn't think that. Okay, it's not like Breakfast at Tiffany's where you have a white guy doing an over-the-top Asian American accent, and the and the they're not translated. They do speak English Was that at Mickey one Rooney? point. 
Yeah, it's yeah, bad. It's <laughs> terrible. But this is just more like a portrayal of the pirates just happened to be native to the part of the country where the Robinsons were. It wasn't like... I mean, it would have been nice if we could have met like one or two nice Asian people, but they served their purpose for the Home Alone-esque uh, takeover they tried to do. I was wondering if someone was going to mention Home Alone, but <laughs> are you going to really say, Pappy, that they weren't just portrayed as brutes, like savages, compared to the white Englishmen and Swissmen? But that's the only... <laughs> Savages, the, savages. The, lim- the number of characters we see is limited, though. I mean, like, the pirates are bad. Like, and this movie doesn't have the time to, to flesh them out as individuals. And if it would have been a bunch of, like, white or black pirates, it would have been even more strange because they weren't, they were in Asia. So, I mean, I, I think that could be a real threat. I don't know how else we're supposed to, to execute on that. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you. I don't think this is as racist as I thought it was going to be when I first stuck it in, but I think <laughs> I, th- I think that the scene where they're falling for all the tricks in particular makes them look like huge dummies. And yeah, um, and maybe just going off that, can, I wanted to ask you guys, what did you guys think was the lamest Swift family trick? Okay, I'll go first. The log, <laughs> the logs, for sure. What were the logs? Can you? The they had a bunch of like logs that they had uh, like restrained, and then they released them, and the logs rolled down the hill. Very Home Alone and Ewok like. They, they squished <laughs> all the pirates. <laughs> I think that squish was squish okay. family Robinson. At one point, you can hear Francis voice saying something like, oh, there's a man being squished. (laughs) (laughs) I heard it clearly. (laughs) No, it was Francis. It was Francis. Oh, Francis? There was one that was like a bridge that gave out, and then they fell to their peril into two feet of standing (laughs) water. (laughs) Well, there were... There, no, Babby, you're right. There were also <laughs> there were pirates already wading through that same water, and then they just <laughs> dumped them into the. Into the water. <laughs> there we go. Took out ten of them. <laughs> They're done for now. Just dump them. And then like the, the arrows come down and like poke their butts. <laughs> <That's really hard. laughs> Dude, those arrows! They didn't do any damage. What was up with that? <laughs> <laughs> the Stevie, scene yeah. I loved is where Francis had like those homemade bombs. <laughs> and he runs to the side of the cliff and throws it at one of the pirates and the camera like moves like 10 feet away from where the bomb would go off and all you hear is BAM! Then It's like an extra long time for the pirate to fall. That's probably my favorite Home Alone trick. What about when he's testing the bombs and the wick jumps from almost burnt to fully <laughs> formed? <laughs> it's like a bit foot long. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> so, what did you guys think about the scene? Right before the Home Alone scene, is probably, in my mind, the worst scene of the movie. And that's when they're celebrating their new holiday Norm, and they're Norm racing. Norm Chomsky Day. They're, <laughs> Norm Chomsky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, all race, they're all racing on different uh, petting zoo animals and hijinks <laughs> ensue, and it's not a very well put together race sequence. Pretty poor. Like, I had no idea what was going on as far as like anything in that scene i like the choice of the editor to play around with the speed and uh (laughs) reversing the film that looked really realistic to have it (laughs) go one and a half times and then reverse it whoa we're running backwards now how about that (laughs) (laughs) yes stevie you never said what you thought the lamest trick was but that's fine i stevie did mention ewoks and i think it's actually a known fact that this movie really did inspire Star Wars in several different ways. Did you guys know that? Like like Anakin? Like Anakin? That's one. And then yeah, the Ewoks the Ewoks and Return of the Jedi, like the logs and stuff. I think I think George Lucas has come out and said that obviously he was a big fan of this director and this scene in Swiss Family Robinson um, was mirrored in Star Wars. So there you go. Another point that's mirrored in Star Wars, but I think that A New Hope <laughs> executes on 20 million times better than this is the sort of the love triangle aspect where you have two male protagonists, then a female 
is inserted into the picture. And one of them is definitely like a bad boy and one of them is more bookish. Because in, in A New Hope, there really isn't the brother-sister dynamic established at all yet. And there is a little bit of mm-hmm. not overt tension between Luke and Han, but they're both like... Even at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back, you have that. Yeah, and like Luke's like fist pumping and he gets like a kiss on the cheek when she, they swing across. But like Carrie mm-hmm. Fisher's definitely attracted to the older, more bad boy one. It's a, it felt almost like beat for beat. Uh similarly executed and i also think that the brothers dynamic of the two older brothers reminds me a lot of uh charlie sheen and emilio estevez and young guys oh, they, they, vie, they, vie, they vie to be leader of the group <laughs> indeed oh jesus <laughs> swiss and, family regulators and time bandits don't forget about time bandits <laughs> i remember i remember time bandits. Time bandits. I, don't, I don't think you could possibly miss the the sheen reference <laughs> So I think we kind of move on to our final act, which is the pirates are defeated, I guess, because the, I keep wanting to say the boy, Roberta's grandpa. Fast Roberta. Fast Roberta. (laughs) Fast Roberta's grandpa finally comes back and his ship uh, throws a few cannonballs and the the, uh, pirates escape, I suppose. And the Swift family Robinson is left to choose their fate. So we have most of the family chooses to stay. And Ernst, obviously, chooses to leave and go get an education. Uh, How do you guys feel about the ending? And I think we should get our yeses and nos probably at this point. You want me to go first? Wait, so we're talking about the ending and then our yes and no's all wrapped into one response? Should that, final thought. Yeah, I think yes is a no's final thought. <laughs> Jordan's really right, looking so, to wrap things up here. <laughs> and I don't blame him. Uh, the ending the ending was fine. Uh, I, I was fine with the different characters pursuing their own path. And, and I'm sure Josh will touch on this, but there, there were sort of the bigger questions, I guess, of... <laughs> what is paradise and you know what what do you need to be happy and and sort of seeking beyond that and and what the different characters were trying to find in happiness but for me overall this movie is a lot like an avatar almost where i can see why at the time the scale and the and the production value of it is so impressive that visually it's a good movie, but I mean, the dialogue just doesn't hold up. And, and you can go back and, and watch an older movie like a Casablanca or, or even a Wizard of Oz. There's a family movie that the dialogue doesn't feel completely forced and, and just strange and disjointed. Um, and so if, if you take away that aspect, the story isn't that strong and visually it's not really impressive. Not to mention the fact that I don't like animals getting hurt. So it's I'll give it a soft no. I think if you're a student of film, you might want to watch this and you'll appreciate things that Spielberg and Lucas definitely picked up on and it definitely laid the groundwork for the family action adventure type movie. But this is a standalone film. I was bored and I don't think I'll revisit this anytime soon in my life. So soft no. Abby, had you had you ever watched it before, or was this your first time? That was the thing is, I, I if I would have bet if you would have bet me a hundred dollars right before I watched it, I would have bet that I hadn't watched it. But I knew every fucking scene. So at some <laughs> point, either through osmosis or seeing clips, I don't remember ever sitting down to watch it. But I knew the story and the famous scenes pretty well. Well, maybe you saw it in the past life, Pappy. Could be. Maybe I'm the grandpa Pappy from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ransom. <laughs> Ransom not. Phoebe, how about you? Oh, man. Um, the ending kind of speech talk with Fritz and Fast Roberta did kind of remind me of Casablanca. <laughs> Fast um, But uh, I was pretty bored watching this movie, just as Pappy was. I watched this movie when I was younger as a kid. I remember wanting to leave the room so badly when my family would put it on, but I was forced to stay. I'm just going <laughs> to give it a no. Um, not a no dog or a hell no dog or a soft no. Just a no for me. I probably 
will not revisit it again. Were you being sarcastic with the Casablanca analogy? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Douchebag. It's <laughs> yeah. not nice. Josh, where are you at? All, all things in the account, I really, I think, respect what they tried to do with this movie, and I think it does have enough reference in time and like I, th- I think it has it's just it was a big enough movie that I think he probably deserves a watch if you're a movie buff at all I think it does a good job of capturing the imagination and like I said earlier I did think there are some interesting moments where you have two brothers that honestly sometimes two brothers <laughs> damn it <laughs> You have, to, you have two brothers that are really like, it, it feels like they could seriously try to fight to the death over a girl and over sex in a family movie. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I do think there are some like little writing things that if you went back and watched, you might pick up on. The, the one thing I didn't, wasn't sure of is why Roberta chooses Fritz. I thought it was, I thought the whole movie is supposed to be like a brain versus brawn and they both have their ups and their downs and their flaws and that Roberta would in the end just kind of say like, I can't be with one of you because they're brothers and we're on an Island, but instead she like chooses the brawn one. And I don't think that's a good lesson. Um, this is like right down the middle for me and I'm going to have to give it like <sighs> the flaccidest of Vigo Morganson. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> uh, this is definitely my softest yes I've given on this podcast so far. <laughs> Yikes. I think it's better than that. Boss Baby. Boss Baby. <laughs> 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 I think I've I have a few like lasting questions, I guess. And I don't understand why the redhead who is definitely just like a normal white girl was named Roberta. That doesn't really make sense to me. She was supposed. She was supposed to be exotic, and she just wasn't. Um, also, Disney wasn't ready for that yet. No, Disney wasn't. You're right. Jordan knows a lot about Swiss names in the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Josh, you're suggesting that Roberta was an English name in the 1700s? Want to be a Swiss name? Yeah. No, she was from Eng- she was from London. Oh. And yeah, I think Roberta is Robert with an A. I think it's a female English name. Like, it's not Roberto, Jordan. That was good analysis on the spelling of Roberta there. I like that. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna you think, about- wait, you think Roberta is like a Hispanic name? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, no, I think I'm not in this. this I thought Roberta like, was a Hispanic name. Hispanic. I'm saying that it seems exotic, but it's just a white girl. The name Roberta is a German, German baby, baby name. name. Yeah. Really? <laughs> and famous forebears, Scottish national hero. So it's also famous in Scotland. Today I learned. And we've been talking about how, how it's, it's just two brothers. Uh, <laughs> but you've been, you've been talking about that. <laughs> they clearly have a strong bond. But there is a very annoying third brother in this movie. <laughs> so annoying, in fact, that I think, ah, oh, man, even though I recommended this movie for the pod, I think it's oh, got no. a soft no. Oof. And that that little brother is pretty fucking weak. He's so, he, at one point, he just goes, Nia! <laughs> <laughs> he, can't, he can't handle his liquor. Uh, I don't know what to do about him. So it's, it's a, it's a super soft no. I know that I have <laughs> the, the so highest, no's for Jordan the movies. highest no rate of anyone on the pod, but it, it, it has to be what it is. Um, so three no's, one yes. Three no's, one yes. So I feel like Jordan, that's uh, Walgreens Walgreens tonight. <laughs> Jordan, you Walgreens think? sushi the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, you think Boss Baby is better than this movie? Uh, I'm not asking. I'm telling no. you. You think that Boss no, Baby no. is better than this movie? No, I don't think it's better than this movie. Sandy West then why, is better. Then why than is Boss Baby. Baby a yes? Dude, you can't you can't go back and measure. <laughs> that's exact. That's all you can do. It's, it's <laughs> the heat of the moment. 
<laughs> Josh is so upset he gave it a no. I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out for this one. Whoa, <laughs> if, if Stevie can go back on his on his yes and say a no, then why... If I could go back, I would give Boss Baby probably a soft no. So... The softest of no's. So should we put? Should we change the stats? Is that an official no for Jordan, or do you have to keep it on that? You cannot pivot. No, it's, it's not because I, I can't afford. Court. I can't afford any more no's. This <laughs> 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 is true. <laughs> I've got a heavy no percentage. Lost Baby is the best movie Jordan's seen this year. <laughs> Oscar it's contender. Up it's up there. <laughs> That's three no's, one yes. I said a soft Viggo Morgans- Mortensen. Floppy. A floppy yeah. yes, a floppy no, and two no's. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stop doing that. We gotta find a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> so, On just the Viggo Mortensen penis rating, it is no. <laughs> Back to you, Jordan. Let's go, Captain Fantastic to Warhor. Or what is he in? Warhor. <laughs> Warhor. <laughs> His best movie, Warhor. Dalgo. <laughs> Dalgo. That's what I was thinking of. Warhor. <laughs> Are you thinking of Sea Biscuit? No, I'd like to never think of Sea Biscuit. <laughs> Anywho, the trivia. Uh, so you guys kind of already ruined my first trivia. <laughs> oh God. Steve, <laughs> you said something about Anakin and how that that was the that was the director of this film, and mm-hmm. that was who Anakin Skywalker was named after. So I go to the next IMDb trivia question. I want to know from you guys, starting with uh, we'll start with Drew since his name is first in the alphabet. Yeah, that's fair. But Pappy <laughs> is last. Yeah, who's Drew? Yeah, it's Pappy. Fine. What about Steve? Uh, Josh. Josh, that makes you first. Yes. <laughs> Josh is first. Uh, which animal was subject to electric so- electric shock, which is now illegal in Hollywood movies, but which animal was subject to that sort of treatment? Josh. So what's the game? Are we just going, like, what's the game? <laughs> just guessing animals, baby. Okay. Um, second. Okay. Um, Josh, then, yeah. Pap, then Stevie. Damn it. Electric shock. I want to say that, um, I want to say they shocked that zebra. We all read Fuck. it. We all read it. We all read it. it. We all bullshit. read it. Why did you guys read that? Because we want to <laughs> learn about the movie we're potting on. <laughs> Also, I got pivoted out of the first guess because my name's at the bottom of the alphabet. <laughs> All right, I know what movie I'm picking. Gosh, Wait, is this darn it. Is this standing? <laughs> Josh? Yes. This aggression will not stand, man. <laughs> well, I had I had trivia and you guys fucking ruined it. <laughs> it's just two brothers. <laughs> just two brothers <laughs> handing each other the trivia. We should probably play ourselves out. <laughs> this is horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. This is so stupid. Well, I don't. I don't have another trivia question ready. What, what do you expect? It's over, Pat. If you it's agree over. that this that this trivia is a crime against humanity, <laughs> you can let us know by emailing us at podcastspoilers at gmail Our website is podcastspoilers dot com. Uh, our Twitter is spoilers underscore pod. Uh, and the nicest thing you can do is to leave us a review on iTunes. Just search for us, click on the cereal bowl, click the reviews tab, and leave a number of stars. That is what helps us show up in the rankings and helps us uh, get more plays. I'll come up with a better trivia next time. Please. Well, we hope so, Jode. What? I thought it was good. I thought it was pretty good. It was above average. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Just two oh. brothers. I like how Josh pretended not to know. I actually, I actually oh, didn't. I, I didn't remember, but I think I did read zebra. it subconsciously. Uh, I'm guessing the zebra man. It seems like it'd be that way. <laughs> I had to just guess. Do you guys want to know the movie or what? Yeah, sure. I wasn't. I had a different movie picked out, but because of Jordan, we're gonna go with Two Brothers. The Lion movie? I believe it's Tigers. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. We'll back go. to back Disney films. I'm just joking. We're gonna go with 
four brothers. Mark Wahlberg. Just, just joking. I don't really want to do that one either. Uh. I just want to keep talking about brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway. We can tell. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I've been wanting to choose this movie for a while. I've been on the Schneid for a while. And let's watch uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox story. Yes. Uh, haven't done a comedy in a while. I'm pumped. Is that about brothers? Yeah, it really is. I don't think that's true, but we'll see. He chops oh. his brother in half. He writes a song about him. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Just two brothers. Boss baby. Boss baby. <laughs> Boss baby Mark Boss baby. Boss, Boss baby. <laughs> what is going on? That was great. Yeah, that was some good effects. Like, I, I don't know how they did that. Yeah, you know, they fucking had animals fight. <laughs> I don't think there's any effect. Animal lives were lost, Josh. There was no special effects. 